The Army Reserve Senior Leader Forum. What our leaders have to say about their priorities, the role of the Army Reserve, and improving overall physical health. Warrant Officers. How a critical shortage has leaders seeking some of the best NCOs in the Army to change career paths. Best Warrior. How a competition ultimately rehabilitated a seriously injured soldier. These stories and more ahead on this edition of Army Reserve Today. And welcome to Army Reserve today. I'm Captain Amy Crane. And I'm Sergeant Ivy Nicole Tanner. Thanks for watching. At this year's Army Reserve Senior Leader Forum held at Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado, Lieutenant General Jeffrey Talley outlined his priorities and the way ahead. In keeping with the tradition of the citizen soldier, one of his top priorities is a new private public partnership designed to help Army Reserve soldiers learn valuable skills that will coincide with their professions in the private sector. We rely on the private sector predominantly to employ most of our Army Reserve soldiers. Yes, we do have a large number that work in the public sector as civilians, but predominantly they're in the private sector. So that's why we have over 4,000 agreements in place with companies from the smallest companies all the way to the largest companies around the United States, and they have become a partner with the Army Reserve. So the idea with private-public partnership is the reason private is first is I'm emphasizing private sector. The approach that we're using here, the resources do not come from the DOD. They come from private companies. They could come from the government, the State Department. But the way that we'll do this is think about, you've got our employer partnership office, right, which, apply, which any of you can take advantage of. We're going to transition the EPO office into a private-public partnership office, partnership development office, where employment relationships are not going to be the sole focus anymore. It'll be how do we, for example, take a private sector approach to developing a mentor coaching teaching program, volunteer basis, to anybody that's in the Army Reserve that wants to invest time in themselves from a private sector approach to make themselves more marketable. The difference is the private sector is going to pay for it. Also at the forum, Sergeant Major of the Army Raymond Chandler III spoke about the role of the Army Reserve in the overall Army strategy. He said the support that the Army Reserve provides to commanders complements how the Army operates in a global environment. When you, you get over to Africa and you see what's going on over there, and yes, we're using uh, a big part of an active component unit right now, but as we develop this capacity in AFRICOM and United States Army Africa, see what we're able to provide, those are going to be sourced out of, the, out of the Army Reserve. The combat support and combat service support capabilities that you have, you know, are bar none, and those are the forces that we're going to have to integrate into this uh, change in our strategy as we move forward in the future. Really, it's that, that ability to, to drill a well, or to build a road, or to help build a school, or to help with providing clean water that the Army Reserve are the technical experts at. So. There are huge potential for all of our futures as we move forward, but we've got to remain united. While leaders were at the forum, Brigadier General Tammy Smith, the Army Reserve Human Capital Corps Enterprise Director, focused on in-strength recruiting and retention within the Army Reserve. She also asked for assistance in improving the overall physical health of the force. I put a great deal of emphasis on the AC to Army Reserve transition mission because in a 205 end strength world, that's where I have to make up the difference between what USAREC is unable to uh, put into our formations. But when you look at some of the changing uh, conversations that we're having now, I have to rethink that a little bit. It's very good from a readiness perspective, but I also have to make sure that I remember that your soldiers out in the formations will now be maybe in a position where they have to find another unit. And we, we've got to make sure from that manning perspective, again, that we never forget those are, those are real soldiers out there and that we try to set the conditions that we find balance first internally with our individuals who are already MOS qualified, fully fit, and those people that we really want to maintain in, in, the, in the force. Warrant officers are highly specialized experts and trainers, but there's a critical shortage within the Army Reserve. So what qualities make an ideal warrant officer? Three U.S. Army Reserve Command warrant officers 
share their thoughts and experiences. I've always looked up to warrant officers. Um, they've always been, they are the subject matter experts. And as an enlisted and as a civilian for the Army Reserve, people have always come to me as the subject matter expert. So I just wanted to take that even further and go with, go to the Warrant Officer Corps. Um, I also think that Warrant Officers are the perfect liaison between enlisted soldiers and officers. And I, I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be that person. First of all, you've got to be extremely good at your skill set. Secondly, I expect strong leadership skills, incredibly strong leadership skills. They put them through the test when they go through the CANDA program and ultimately through our basic course. From the beginning, as a W-1, we're expected to be a counselor and advisor and mentor to not only those in our own MOS and career fields in the Army, both warrants and the NCOs, but our leaders, all the way up through our general officers, expect us to know and be able to advise them. And, and we're pretty well known for being pretty candid, much more candid than some of our O-grade counterparts have been. Well, if you want to fly, become an aviator and fly vehicles, we actually um, can assess a warrant officer. Um, we have the high school to flight school program. So that means you can be somebody coming out of high school or you can be a private if you can um, meet the flight aptitude test and um, the ASVAB qualifications and the, and the medical qualifications to become an aviator. However, our um, technical warrant officers, we're normally looking for a soldier that has at least the rank of E5 sergeant, uh, has at least uh, six years experience, uh, and meets uh, the prerequisites that are established by our proponents to become a warrant officer. Uh, officers can become um, warrant officers as well. Our only, requ our only um, requirement is, is that if an officer applies to become a warrant officer, they are at least two years prior to their mandatory removal date. If you are qualified and have questions about taking this next step in your career, please visit the website shown below for more information. Army Reserve Today will be back in just a moment. I'm here with Jimmy Nashville, the self-proclaimed world's greatest stuntman. What are some of your greatest stunts? This stunt I did is still getting hits on YouTube. Weren't you injured? I walk a little funny. I hear your next stunt will be to fry this holiday turkey under the roof of this garage. <laughs> oh no, I wouldn't do that. That'd be really stupid. If you're frying a turkey, take five and learn how to do it safely. All right, we keep the plug off the ground so it won't get wet. All right, buddy, come on, let's go inside. It's cold. And you make sure the fireplace is safe for fires. All right, keep things away from the space heater, okay? Does the smoke alarm work? We don't want anyone tripping over this extension cord, do we? Here we go, boys. Oh, all right. Ah. And we got some Home safety in winter is important. Pass it on. Welcome back. Every Army Reserve Best Warrior has a story about how they train to get to the competition. Sergeant First Class Jason Manella's story tells us about how the Best Warrior competition ultimately rehabilitated him from serious combat injuries. Every Army Reserve Best Warrior competitor has a personal story about what it takes to compete. For 27-year-old Sergeant First Class Jason Manella of the 445th Civil Affairs Battalion, the beginning of his Army story is like something from the pages of a Hollywood war movie script. On March 20th of 2003, we invaded Iraq. I was 16 years old and I, I wanted to join the Army. Um, I showed up to the recruiter's office and they told me I was too young. The day I turned 17 on my 17th birthday, I showed up in the recruiter's office and I told them like, all right, I'm 17 now. As a young soldier, Manila participated in previous Best Warrior competitions and showed his seniors tenacious leadership potential, despite his youth. He always had that baby face. He always looked like the young kid. When I first met him, he weighed maybe a buck and a quarter. But he always had a lot of heart, always asked a lot of like the right questions. He, he's always worked really, really hard to be the best at whatever he does. However, on his third deployment, an event caused Sergeant Manella to question his chair's future in the Army. Um, so the last deployment, we were in the, the province of Kandahar, operating in like remote rural villages. Throughout the course of the, the tour, I had multiple IED blasts and concussions. Uh, I just ended up spending a week in the TBI clinic. During his time in the TBI clinic, Sergeant Manella found his own way to deal with the symptoms of his injuries. It was overwhelming and frustrating. I'd wake up in the morning and I would forget Something as simple as, like, did I take my multivitamin? People would give me, like, go see Sergeant so-and-so. I'd walk five feet away and be like, wait, who? 
and it was just, it was definitely, I think, probably a low point in my life. Sergeant Manella used the challenge of the Best Warrior competition to regain his cognitive thought, memory, and eventually hope. So the Best Warrior competition gave me hope um, by way of challenging me. When the, when the enemy attacks start making us lose our will to fight, that's when they win. And I didn't, I didn't want that, I didn't want to be beat. Rather than sitting there and playing, building puzzles or playing games, um, I decided I'd just pick up the Army Study Guide and start seeing what I could remember, being that I was at a, a lowered state of cognitive processes. I couldn't think straight, I, you know, I was stuttering over words, I wasn't walking. Like, I figured being able to challenge myself to improve all of those and compete, not only would I get over the condition I was in, but actually improve and better myself in my career. Sergeant First Class Jason Manella's Army story reads like a Hollywood movie script, but in this story, there's a second beginning and it starts with a journey to Best Warrior 2013. I feel like not only did I recover, but I've improved myself and, you know, and now I'm, I'm better off than before. Reporting for the Army Reserve at Fort McCoy, Wisconsin, I'm Army Sergeant Ivy Nicole Tanner. Army Reserve engineers are called on by combat commanders to overcome all kinds of obstacles, including large bodies of water. Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Richardson explains how they did it during this summer's combat support training exercise at Fort McCoy, Wisconsin. The 739th and the 401st Multi-Role Bridge Companies are out on Fort McCoy, Wisconsin for combat support training exercise 86. Here behind me, they're dropping all of our equipment today and trying to put together a six float um, bridge, basically to see, make sure everything's working and get a little bit of training out there on putting together the bridge. My favorite thing about this job is I've trained a lot of these guys, so seeing them execute it on their own, kind of with me stepping back, is very rewarding. Every soldier in the company has a role to play. It takes a total team effort by the Army engineers to build a bridge quickly and efficiently. Oh, oh. Keep pulling! Keep on when the waves come in, pull! The standard on this is 20 minutes, so we can move oh. three APCs and 30 personnel across the river in 25 minutes. And sometimes I get out there when I probably shouldn't, um, you know, but it's, it's a new, new step. It's different as you progress through and you need to train soldiers so they can take over because you can't do it forever. Reporting from Fort McCoy for the 366 MPAD, I'm Army Sergeant Jeremiah Richardson. Fort McCoy wasn't the only place engineers spanned the water. Portland, Oregon's 671st Engineer Company demonstrated their ability to get the job done during Exercise River Assault 2013 at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. Several U.S. Army active and reserve units are working together to bridge and cross the Arkansas River as part of Operation River Assault 2013 at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. River Assault is a two-week exercise culminating in this river crossing event where the efforts of over 800 soldiers all come to bear at one point in time. We've got two battalion headquarters, we've got four uh, bridge companies, a number of other engineer companies providing support, whether it's assault or construction support. We've got maintenance, medics, aviation, just about everything that you can bring together in the Army supporting this exercise. The 412 Theater Engineer Command from Vicksburg, Mississippi, is overseeing these two weeks of training and exercises that finish with bridging a 300 meter wet gap crossing. This is a year-long planning event. Uh, this is briefed at our yearly training brief. Uh, so this is planned 12 months out, and from there we start doing uh, planning conferences, we start pulling together material, we start resourcing things that we don't have. Uh, so this takes a good year to pull together and actually accomplish the mission. Hey, I think it's going to be good. It makes me proud to be with these guys in this unit. It's pretty awesome. You know, especially when you get to build things like that big raft behind me <laughs> and drive all the trucks that are over there. <laughs> Extended combat training allows soldiers to fine tune their mission essential skills to a higher standard.
Reporting from Operation River Assault 2013, Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. I'm Army Sergeant Michael Bryan. Army Reserve soldiers from the 348th Engineer Company Route Clearance out of Kansas City, Missouri, practice air assault skills in a very unique way. Army Sergeant Michael Bryan has the story. U.S. Army Reserve soldiers from the 348th Engineer Company Route Clearance based in Kansas City, Missouri, took a break from basic soldiering to practice their air assault skills. CH-47 Chinook helicopters flew meters above the water's surface as soldiers jumped into the water below. As combat engineers, you could be inserted like this behind lines in a river to recon an area ahead. Combat engineers specializing in route clearance can be called upon to tackle rough terrain in combat, construct fighting positions, detect mines, and detonate explosives. Uh, it was definitely a morale booster for the company. We've been training hard, doing demo ranges and uh, sticks lanes all day. From Operation River Assault 2013, Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, I'm Army Sergeant Mike O'Brien. Don't go away. Army Reserve today will be right back. Doc, I had this weird dream. I was jogging along this wintry road, and suddenly I was naked and surrounded by a bunch of strangers all laughing. When you had been wearing proper attire to avoid cold weather injury, gloves, loose lead clothing, and you kept dry? Of course. Oh, well, you obviously know how to avoid cold weather injury. Now, tell me about your first drill, Sergeant. Winter can be a nightmare. Take five and avoid cold weather injuries. Okay, so tell me the safety rules one more time. Treat the weapon as if it's always loaded. The safety on, finger off the trigger, no drugs or alcohol, always wear bright orange clothing, and never go hunting alone. But you forgot one. Always be 100% sure your target before you fire. Obey all the hunting safety rules. Take five, learn them, and stay safe. Hey guys. All right guys, let's gear up. Ready to go? I hear you there. Yeah. Sure we're ready to rock and roll on this one. Yeah. Oh, we're prepped for the weather. Hey, stay on the mark trail. Ski with a buddy. Got it. Hey, let's go, guys. Take five and stay safe on the slopes. Welcome back to Army Reserve today. For the first time this year, soldiers from the 826th and 395th Army Reserve Ordnance Companies got the chance to participate in the 2013 Patriot Exercise at Volk Field Combat Readiness Training Center in Wisconsin. Staff Sergeant Alexander Cartanos with the 368th Public Affairs Detachment reports. Volk Field, Wisconsin has served for 10 years as the location for the National Disaster Response Exercise known as Patriot. The exercise allows National Guard and Air Guard forces to work with local and national disaster response agencies. This year marks the first time that the Army Reserve has participated. The 826th and the 395th Ordnance Companies participated in joint firefighting operations with the Air National Guard. This opportunity allowed the soldiers and airmen to exchange experiences and procedures. The Air Force, they're wonderful. I mean, they get a lot more hands-on than we do and their knowledge was just fed to us and it helped us learn a lot more for this exercise and for um, next events. Another resource important to the event was water. This was provided by soldiers from the 753rd Quartermaster Company. Using reverse osmosis equipment, they provide water for drinking and decontamination operations. Over the exercise, we produced right around 14,000 gallons of water. We delivered somewhere between eight and 10,000 gallons of water. The use of reserve and active duty forces for disaster response was authorized by the National Defense Act of 2012. Reporting from Volk Field, Wisconsin, I'm Staff Sergeant Alexander Cartanos with the 368th Public Affairs Detachment. Soldiers from the 99th Regional Support Command got the chance to practice their job skills while creating an energy efficient and environmentally friendly Army Reserve facility during this year's annual training. Sean Morris has more on how troop labor is saving thousands of dollars. Nearly three dozen soldiers from the Army Reserve's 990th Engineer Company spent their annual training performing an LED lighting retrofit at the Army Reserve Center in Trenton, New Jersey from June 3rd through 19th. 
This marks the first time the Army Reserve has used troop labor in a lighting retrofit project. We're going to see a, a tremendous reduction in energy and, it, and energy cost for the Reserve Center. It's estimated that the Army will save up to $250,000 by using troop labor, as well as another half a million dollars in energy and labor costs over the next decade. Well, we had nightlights, emergency lights that didn't exist that now do exist. So it makes this facility safer at night and safer for everybody in the building. The project also allowed the soldiers to practice their job skills while creating an energy efficient and environmentally friendly facility. I hope that the soldiers who are on this site take away um, pride from this project. This is a, a very, very unique opportunity. The new long-lasting LED lights are not only more energy efficient, but also better for the environment due to their lack of mercury gas and the minimal amount of wasted heat they generate. Not only do we reduce energy, reduce cost, increase safety, we've also reduced the energy requirements on and electricity in the building, which reduces the likelihood of the fire in the building. For the 99th Regional Support Command, this is Sean Morris reporting. The Coast Guard and the Army Reserve join forces at Fort Hunter Liggett, California to learn how to transport hazardous materials during this year's Trans Warrior exercise. Private First Class Christian Higgins with the 209th Broadcast Operations Detachment has the story. The Coast Guard joined forces with the Army to teach soldiers about transporting hazardous material during the Trans Warrior exercise. Coast Guard Lieutenant Andrew Cook explains their mission in more detail. They're going to be provided a uh, 1750. They identify the hazardous material from that 1750. Uh, they uh, select which packaging material needs to be, uh, that, which, pack, which packaging material that product needs to go into and then uh, using the, uh, the job aid that CTAT has, uh, has designed, they properly mark and label that package. This training is vital for these transportation soldiers. It teaches them how to deal with various types of hazardous material and how to react in case of an emergency. A safer army is a safer nation. Reporting for the 209th Broadcast Operations Detachment from Fort Hunter Liggett, I'm Army Private Christian Higgins. Army Reserve soldiers from Arkansas, California, and Nevada rolled into four different states providing free medical services for the residents. Innovative readiness training provides real-world training opportunities for these soldiers while supporting the needs of America's underserved communities. Sergeant First Class Andy Yoshimura with the U.S. Army Civil Affairs and Psychological Operations Command Airborne reports. Well, this is the uh, called the Four State uh, IRT Innovative Readiness Training Mission, and what it is, they brought in a medical unit, the Western Mars G from California, and they are providing medical services free to the uh, citizens of the four state areas. Part of the D Delta Regional Authority, and they've gone through and they've identified some underserved populations that need medical help. The main thing that we provide for the medical unit is we uh, prepare an area study, which is one of our medical tasks, and we brief them on the area. The, the people are um, very appreciative that we're here. Um, they're very receptive, and, uh, and every patient that I've seen, you know, they thank us for being here um, because they don't see military personnel that often in their town, and as far as giving medical care, they don't see that very often. And I think this is one of the first times they've had um, the Army here to take care of them. Well, you know, I've got to practice a lot of like clinical skills, like taking vitals, writing soap notes. Then it's also good to learn how to work with the people. There you go. You know, help them out. What do you think? Learn their concerns Styling. or complaints, and you know, just how to interact with them and help them out as best we can. I love it out here. Yeah, why? Because we actually get to help people and see their reactions, and we have people crying that we help them out so much because they couldn't help themselves, and parents that there's no way they could afford medical care for their children have been able to get seen by a dentist, and they have never seen one in their entire lives. Kids that parents couldn't afford to get sports physicals and now having the ability to go play sports, and the elderly who could not come drive to find a doctor has one here that can help them out. The community has catered every need that we've had. Anything we need help with, they're more than happy to help us out. You can really tell they really need it because of how, how happy they are and how much help and in their eyes you're going to see that they really needed it and for us to be able to provide that is such a blessing for us not just as our jobs as soldiers but as people themselves. Being able to help others is like one of the basic human needs. 
we have deeply bonded with the community over here because we feel that the Army have actually performed one of the most uh, compiling our jobs. Since we are like helping the community, this is our, our feeling that we are giving back to our country, the trust and confidence that they have provided in us as well. I, I personally bonded with uh, this community you have a good day, okay? and I'm looking Dude, forward to come back. An Army Reserve Lieutenant one day and a Sergeant the next. Specialist Joe De La Pena with the 205th Press Camp Headquarters takes us inside the life of First Lieutenant Clinton Roberts, a military police officer who uses his military training in his everyday civilian career. Yes, sir, to a sergeant? Not normally, except for Sergeant Clinton Roberts, who serves his city with the Tulsa Police Department and this country as a United States Army Reserve officer. I, I feel that, you know, the civilian law enforcement and the military police training that I've received over the past three or four years are go hand in hand. I take the training from the, from the military and try to implement it into my civilian law enforcement, uh, starting from the basics, from troop leading procedures, uh, all the way down to, to clearing room. Clear! I always thought he was mature, uh, even when he started with this. Uh, but you can see the, the military bearing, the, the command presence he exhibits uh, daily in front of his officers, his peers, uh, and the citizens. Training that I've gone to, my deployment has given me extra abilities, uh, extra confidence, and extra professionalism. Uh, and I try to take that in turn and, and reflect it onto the people that I work around. Lieutenant Roberts will continue working with the Tulsa Police Department and the 366th Military Police Company to not only protect his local city, but also to serve his country. Reporting for the 205th Press Camp Headquarters, I'm Specialist Joe De La Pena. The Steve Harvey Mentoring Program for Young Men is dedicated to teaching the principles of manhood and dream building. The United States Army, both active and reserve, have supported this program since 2009. Private First Class Vincent Gonzalez with the 205th Press Camp Headquarters has the story. My job is to push you to your breaking point. As a reservist, this is one of the greatest opportunities that we can have. Some of you have been broke one too many times mentally. All this physical stuff don't mean nothing. I think the first thing that we've helped each of the mentees realize is this is an opportunity that has been given to them. It is. Some of them volunteered, some of them asked their moms, some of their moms made them come. So when they got here, they didn't want to be here. But our job and my role, just like that in the Army, I'm supposed to instill discipline, I'm supposed to coach and mentor these mentees on what it is that Mr. Harvey wants them to understand. At least you gave me two. I appreciate it for giving me at least two. Switch it up! As a leader, I believe that you must serve, one must serve. So my service opportunities aren't just delegated through the Army. Many people have a misconception about reservists. They think we're the only part-time soldiers. And then when we actually get on ground, they see that we have the same passion, the same fire, the same drive. I've been with the Army since um, May of 2002. This is my first year here at the Steve Harvey Mentoring Program. And Mr. Harvey has proven himself on the national stage to hold himself very responsible and as a leader. If you want to be what I found one of the greatest leaders, it starts with service. Are you motivated? Motivated, motivated, downright motivated. You check me out, you check me out. Whoa. And that will do it for this episode of Army Reserve Today. For more information about the Army Reserve, check us out online at www.usar.army.mil. Friend us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at U.S. Army Reserve. From Fort Bragg, North Carolina and the U.S. Army Reserve Command, I'm Captain Amy Crane. And I'm Sergeant Ivan Nicole Tanner. Thanks for watching.